Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to this video. This is Chris from Real Low Trading. In today's video, we're going to talk about charting platforms. I wanted to compare a few platforms that I work with and show you a few things that I've noticed over time of using it and basically explain to you how I use these charting platforms here. The first thing you got to know is that nothing is perfect. There's going to be a trade off. And the reason for that, I'll explain to you as the video goes on. So if you enjoyed this content, leave a like on the video because it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And let's get to it here. So the platforms we're going to talk about in this video, the first one is TradingView. The next one is Sierra Charts. And the last one is going to be Jigsaw's Charts, which are still kind of in beta. And I would say they're not completely workable yet, but we're still going to talk about it in this video because it's relevant to my trading setup here. So the first thing I want to talk about is volume profiles. So we're going to do a comparison here. Now we're looking at a 30 minute chart for NASDAQ futures, and these are session profiles here you're looking at. On the right side, this is the total profile for everything you're seeing here in the visible range of the chart. Now what I'm going to do now is bring this other chart, which is essentially the identical chart, except this is Sierra charts now. And I just wanted to bring to your attention a few things. Now, this is the same exact chart. The only thing different is that these volume profiles are starting from a different time. So if you look closely here at the bottom of the screen, you can see that the starting point of this profile is at midnight. And that's just the way it's set. If you want to change that, you go into study settings into the start and end time of these profiles, and you have to change it there. Now, as you can see here, I have it set to start at 6 p.m., but it's not starting at 6 p.m. It's starting at midnight for whatever reason. So I might have to go in and fix that. But actually, the fact that the profile start at midnight doesn't bother me at all here. It doesn't really make a difference for me. Um, but one thing that does make a difference, and I'll show it to you real quick here. So look at these profiles. These profiles start at 6 p.m. Eastern time, the open of the session. If you look exactly at all of these volume profiles, you may notice that they're not always tick for tick the right data. And it's very nuanced basically, but see, for example, let's look at this high volume node right here. You can see it's around 951 area. If I look over here on TradingView, it's the same thing, 951 to 952. Now let's go maybe three sessions in the past here. Let's go a little bit in the past. For example, this large node here, three sessions back would be, in this case, it's being marked around 855. On my Sierra chart, it's also being marked at 855. So, so far we're seeing some consistency here. Now, if you do look a little closer here, you will notice that the data seems to be slightly approximated on the trading view volume profile. Whereas on this data, this is coming from CQG, it is looking like there's a little bit more detail in these profiles here. For example, let's look at the most recent profile. You can see very clearly where these empty spots or single prints are in the volume profile, one of them being right here at 877. Now, if you look at the profile on trading view, at 877 here, you can't quite see that empty spot on the profile right there. In fact, it looks like it's been filled, but really all it is is just an extremely low volume area. So the way the volume is displayed is largely the same as you can see. However, it looks slightly less detailed and that's the number one analysis I've been able to make here by comparing the data from trading views volume profiles with data from CQG going through Sierra charts and going through Jigsaw as well. So now just for fun, I'll bring up the Jigsaw chart, which is essentially the same thing and just take a look at the profile here and you can see pretty much a similar thing. The single prints are appearing right there, right around 877 and 895 approximately. And it looks about the same here, except it's just more nuanced on this profile. Now, if I'm comparing where these high volume nodes were, the same thing applies, except that this profile has been divided starting in the overnight session and this one starts in the 930 session. So the way these platforms start their session profiles changes but honestly that doesn't really matter what does matter for me is if the nodes are being displayed consistently from platform to platform they seem to be pretty consistent so let's start from here april 13th you can see this high node was at 918 and you can see this profile looks like it has about two high nodes right in this area here so we have 918 as well as 932. now if i look at the session here it looks about the same except there's a bit of a gray area right it's 916 up to 934 and that's kind of the gray area I'm trying to explain to you here that on this profile, the high node is up at 918. Whereas over here, if I'm hovering onto the high node, the price is 916.50. So, you know, that's about a point and a half off. That means that if I'm aiming for one of these high nodes as a profit target, my profit area might be a point and a half off. And that's not the end of the world with NQ, let's be honest. But still, the data is not exact. Second high node there, 32 
on TradingView, it's about 35 to 33. So again, you can clearly see that this is an approximation of the exact data here. Look at this high note again up here, 973.75. If I go up to this high note right here, 974. So if you do use TradingView as a volume profile analysis chart, you should note this that your high nodes sometimes can be within two to three points away from the actual high node. It should never really be considered one exact price. That's why it's important to view it as an overall area rather than one exact price. So you may be asking, why are you comparing these two platforms? Well, I need to know exactly how accurate the data is on all these platforms. And I need to make sure that I'm seeing data being consistent from platform to platform. So that way, I, when it comes time to choosing which platforms I use for which kind of analysis, I can make the right choices and potentially keep my monthly data fees lower than they need to be. So the next thing is we're going to talk about some of the functionalities in these platforms that is actually preventing me from only using one platform. So if it was up to me, I would only use Jigsaw, but unfortunately I cannot do that and I'll explain to you why because there's a few important nuances that I need in my current way of trading that I can only get from a platform like Sierra Charts. And some of these nuances, I'll explain them to you right now. All right, the first nuance here is the ability to display volume and delta in whatever time frame I select. In this case, I have it up here in the corner every 15 seconds, right? So 15 second volume and 15 second delta. And I'm showing this live streaming real time. So you can see here that that's changing real time with the market. Now, with Jigsaw's newest update to their charting system, which is still considered to be beta, I was able to perform this. And you can see how it's working fine there. Also, I have it on another screen here where this delta figure is moving fine what I did notice is that if you set the chart to a second chart you will be getting the fastest update time for those volumes and deltas on the chart and, and what I also noticed is that if I compared it to Sierra chart this 15 second idea with the same thing going on in Sierra chart, I actually noticed that the update speed was faster on Jigsaw. So that's very good to know. Now we need to talk about a few other important things here. In Sierra charts, there's a few things that are game changing and I'm gonna explain them to you very briefly in this video. Um, certain things that I wish Jigsaw's charts had, but they do not have currently. Um, the first thing is being able to display numbers bars in basically any way that you want to display it, right? You can color the information any which way you want to. If you have an idea for a chart and you need to highlight a certain area, for example, the way I have these charts set up is that the areas that traded the highest liquidity are being colored in a darker area than the areas that traded less liquidity overall. I find this a good way to display the information because I can see areas where the market is doing a lot of business as well as areas where the market is not doing a lot of business. This is an example of just one way to display some order flow analytics. And as you can see, I have this chart set to a point and figure chart, which is a variation of a range chart. So you see me sometimes using range charts that's another interesting thing about Sierra chart is the fact that you can switch between tick charts, volume charts, range charts, time-based charts, point and figure charts. You can switch between all of those on the fly simply by typing something on your keyboard. So in that case, I typed 25R and I hit enter and now I've switched this to a 25 tick range chart. If I wanna go back to my point and figure chart, I'm gonna do something similar. It's gonna be 20-1 PNF, enter and this is gonna switch back to the chart I had earlier. So Sierra chart is basically unmatched when it comes to that. So I definitely have to rely on that for now, not a problem. One of the other important features here is the ability to customize your numbers bars calculated values. One of the important things I look at here is the duration of these bars, right? So these point and figure bars, they're similar to simple range bars, except that there's an actually another input here that determines when a new bar is going to be formed. So as you can see here, all these bars are not all the same length. I'm not gonna explain to you what point and figure bars are in this video, but I will tell you that I like them a little bit better than range charts. So the bar duration is quite an important nuance for for me. Uh, the next thing I need out of a charting software is actually the ability to display the linear regression channels, which is basically the standard deviations away from price based on a certain number of bars that I select. Um, and if I go back to this main screen here, you can see that I've configured this platform to have this going on for the Qs, the S&Ps, and the Russell 2000. Uh, these are just based on range charts over the last 71 bars i believe you can change that to match your trading time frame now what i just explained to you about the linear regression channels um, i was actually able to do this in trading view as well and the whole point of this 
is I wanted to say, okay, is there a way that I can get rid of Sierra chart to save myself 36 bucks a month? Well, the answer is currently no, but there's certain things you can do in other platforms like this, for example. So I actually found a custom linear regression script on TradingView, and let me tell you which one that is. It's this one, Linreg JWAMO12. So this guy made a custom script where he's actually displaying the amounts on the price scale, and that's kind of what I wanted to see, because all I do is hide this behind the dome to get an average of the current volatility condition. Yeah, so I think I've gone over a lot of the reasons why I need to rely on Sierra charts here to see certain things. It's basically this chart right here. So this would be my guide chart. Everything else would be done on the trading dom, and that's pretty much it guys. So if you learned something from this video, feel free to leave a like and comment and subscribe. All right guys, we'll catch you soon. Take care, bye.